So the biomes you saw in previous devlogs were just placeholders. I didn't like the proportions and their shapes, so I just took some code from the internet and smashed it in my game and called it a day, pushing all responsibility over to future Jackie. Finish her. I understood the concept of noise and how it was generating the tiles, but I had no idea what the values were doing. So I gave myself three weeks to figure out noise and wrap up the biomes. Disclaimer, it took me longer than three weeks. So Godot makes it super easy to mess around with noise. In the texture node, you can slap on some noise and go to town on the values. I highly recommend spend some time to mess around with the noise so you can get a nice feel for it. Unfortunately, this noise texture is not really going to help us out when we want to visualize the biomes. Because we're not using one noise, we're using three noises. One for water and land, one for rainfall, and one for temperature. But for now, let's just forget about the water one and let's focus on the rainfall and the temperature noise map. So we're gonna make a graph, and the y-axis will be for rainfall, and the x-axis will be for temperature. And remember, the noise map returns a value of 0 to 1.5. So those are gonna be our ranges. Some of you might be thinking, I thought the noise map was a pretty picture. But you have to remember that you can turn this picture into numbers. 1.5 being white, 0 being black, and all in between are nice shades of gray. All 50 of them. Bruh. So we can designate areas for the graph for the different biomes. I came up with 14 biomes. Let's just say we're looping through our map area and we have a position. We need to look at where that position is on the rainfall and the temperature map. Let's say the rainfall gives us a value of 0.8 and the temperature gives us a value of 1.3. We're going to go back to our graph and look for where that point lies on the graph and then we decide, okay, that's a Japanese forest. Pop in the tile for the Japanese forest. Bada bing bada boom. So I wanted to make these biome placements amazing. So I developed a tool to help me visualize what those biomes will look like merged together. And after days of messing around with these values and trying to make beautiful biomes and changing how the graph looked like, I couldn't come up with anything that I liked. It made me really sad. Well, what can I say? That's game development. You try things, they fail. You try, you cry, you cry, you cry. And maybe you end up with a game at the end. I, I, I haven't really gotten that far yet, I don't know. But what's important about your game is that it's fun to play. One of the big inspirations for me is actually Dwarf Fortress. I've actually never played it before. <laughs> but when they started out, they used these ASCII graphics. And I know for those of you who have never played or heard of this game, you can think, how the heck did they sell any copies? Well, it's actually a very popular game and only until recently did they overhaul the UI. But before that, people loved it. There are many other countless examples of a successful game that doesn't look that good because at the end of the day, you want to have fun. So unfortunately, I had to search for other solutions of making biomes. And it wasn't until I stumbled past this thumbnail that I got an idea of what to do. Alrighty, so these biomes were achieved through Vernoy diagrams. So after observing these biomes, you can tell they're more uniformly shaped and evenly distributed. And this is exactly what I needed. So I put on my nerd hat and got learning. And then I came across Pure Beauty. This is the book of shaders. If you want to learn about OpenGL shading language, this is definitely the book you need to check out. There's a chapter on cellular noise. And before this book, I had no idea that Veronoi noise and cellular noise were linked. After scanning the chapter on cellular noise, I realized I didn't need to implement it from scratch. Godot had already hooked me up. And after changing the noise values for Voronoi noise, here are what the biomes look like. Now the water is a completely separate noise map, so don't mind it. I was loving the way the world looked, but something was missing. Borders. And this is where my life completely fell apart. Did you know that your email could be floating around the dark web as we speak. In this day and age, keeping your data private is vital. Once these people have your data, you will be targeted. And it ain't just your granny who's in danger here. Big YouTubers have lost access to their channels from scams. 
So it's best to take preventative measures and to take back control of your data. So I am proud to announce the sponsor of this video. Aura is your all-in-one stop for keeping yourself safe in the digital sphere. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura does it all. Let Aura do the hard work in keeping you safe online. And by using my link, aura.com slash tracky codes, you can get full access for free for 14 days. Thank you so much, and thank you Aura for the sponsorship. So the next part almost made me quit Lawcraft altogether. So placing normal tiles down didn't take too much time, but using terrains is a different story. In my last video, I go more into depth with terrains. Quick and dirty explanation, when you place a terrain, it checks all the surrounding tiles in order to determine which tile to place. In this image, we are placing 785,000 tiles. Actually, it's double that because there's dirt tiles on a layer under the biome floor. But anyways, imagine how taxing it is. For each tile, it has to do 8 checks. So that's 6,285,000 checks. So at this point, I wasn't really shocked that it was slow, and I knew of a way I could improve performance. And that's by using threads. What are threads? All the code in your game is being run on a game loop. Once your code is done being executed, it runs it again. Game engines have to be fast. They have to always be on their toes to detect user input right away. What if we have to do a huge operation? Sometimes big operations can clog up our game loop. The character in the world will be frozen until it's done with that operation. So how do we solve this? We run another thread. And that thread's only job is to perform that taxing operation. And once that operation is done, we kill the thread. So I implemented the thread, and I was amazed when I moved my character around while the thread was doing its business. But my amazement turned to horror when I noticed it was missing random chunks of tiles. After discussing my problems with Google, I found an open GitHub issue with the exact problem I was facing. Live update. While editing this video, more information was added to the issue. And this is not a bug, but a thread safety issue. From my understanding, you shouldn't edit the tile map while it's in the scene tree. You need to first use a thread to edit a tile map that's not in the scene tree, and then when it's done, then you can add it to the scene tree. But past Jackie was unaware and she thought it was an engine bug. I didn't give up because I had another attempt up my sleeve. Instead of drawing the whole world, why not only draw a portion that's around the player? This is called chunk loading. When I implemented it, it was still too slow. I even tried chunk loading with threads, but the missing chunks was obviously still an issue. But chunk loading was not all in vain because I'm now chunk loading the trees and other objects with collisions. Because these objects with collisions take more resources than tiles. After all the effort, I still didn't have borders. And of course this got to me. But with game dev, you need to move on sometimes and revisit an issue when you're ready. And I'm lucky that this was an aesthetic issue, but I was pretty burned out. So for one week, I took a little break from Lawcraft, edited this video, worked on my Godot 4 tutorial, and played some Darkest Dungeon. After that week, I felt refreshed and ready to go. I changed the whole way of interacting with the items, using the mouse now instead of a raycast in front of the character. I also changed the tree from tiles to scenes, which forced me to rework the chunk loading code and the world generation. And then I was just polishing up all the bugs so I could release the demo and source code to the Patreon. And while you enjoy this video of my dog and cat playing, I just wanted to give a big thank you to all the Patreons. I really appreciate it, guys. I also think there may be a way for making the terrains faster. Maybe by writing my own auto tiler, but that will be a story for another time. As of now, I'm really happy with the direction Lawcraft is going. If you want to watch the development, I stream on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 3.30 to 8 Central European time. I've also started doing hydroponics, and I'm just so excited for spring. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching, have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!